The rear door is the same as the front door. Fernando's already pulled this speaker out. It's sitting over on the bench so that we can take a look at it and compare it to the new Focal we're gonna put into place. And with that being said, let's head over to the bench and take a look at those. For the rear speakers, we're gonna be doing the Focal IC Ford 165 plug and plays. This is a six and a half. On the top, we have those same instructions, those same little stickers. It has two boxes inside of it. Just like the other one, they simply slide out. These are packaged very similar to the six by nines in the front. They have the little piece of foam to cover the magnet. They have the front piece of foam stuck onto the back of the speaker. There's also a piece of plastic over this mid base, and there's also one over the tweeter. This one is important. Don't remove it until you put the door panel back on, but make sure you remove it. It's kind of the running joke. We leave it on, and then every now and then we'll get done. I'll be like, how come there's no tweeter coming out of the rear door? And friend will be like, oh, uh, give me a minute. There is no protection on this aluminum tweeter at all. The foam, take your time, peel it off, and then stick it into place. Trying to keep it as outside as possible away from the speaker itself. Don't let it touch the rubber surround. Flip it over, pound it into place. This is the back seat speaker we are gonna be replacing. In the rear, there are no tweeters at all. This is a full range driver. Paper cone, just like the front. Foam surround. It has the fast ring type foam on it to couple up with the factory door panel. Small magnet just like the front speaker. They're both four ohm and both 25 watts. Right off the bat, you'll notice that these are shaped just a little bit different. It has like a uh, spade shape to it almost, but that's okay. The whole pattern and the actual usable surface is the exact same size as this one. They both line up. We can put this on the door. This is in the same spot as in here. These screw into the same spots and this foam that is on the back of it covers up the same hole. For some reason, they just made this one bigger. Uh, it is a plastic construction. And as before, you can see the magnet is much smaller than the Focal magnet. Same amount of power, 75 to 150 watts. It has the passive crossover attached to the back of it for the mid-range. The one for the tweeter is located up next to this. This is going to give us obviously some trouble from the back that you're not going to have with this. If you have people that ride in the back, they're going to appreciate this speaker a lot more than they appreciated this speaker. The tweeter is low enough in the door to where it is not gonna affect you, the driver. It's just gonna be for the people in the back's enjoyment. The one nice thing about plug and plays, you don't need the fast rings because they're built into the mount. This is designed to mount up just like the factory does. It's designed to mimic the factory. Therefore, the coupling that is required from the factory is already on this speaker. And just like the front, the back is now in place. Sound treatment is in on the door panel inside, the mounting bracket here. He has remembered to remove the plastic cover off the tweeter, as well as we have added sound treatment into the door panel itself. And just like the front, all we have to do now is get this one back on. For now, I got the door panel back on, and even though it comes with those cool stickers that say Focal inside, we still want to put our little touch on it. That means we've added our Focal logos to the door instead of using their Focal logos. It's just that little personal touch we like to do. It's time to find a home for the amplifier and get it mounted into place. We've chosen to go up underneath the passenger front seat in this area right here. It's going to be mounted with the wire coming out this way. We need to get it out of this bag and get the top off. So let's take it over to the bench and we'll tell you a little bit about this particular amplifier. To get the top off of this, there are two Allen screws on either end. Loosen them up. You do not need to remove them. Once they're loose, give it a little tap to push it down and it'll come right off. There's two more screws here at the back. These are what lock the back into place. These do not need to be removed. While we're working on it, I like to put it back in the bag and put it in the box so that the cover doesn't get scratched. Since it's already on its side, let's take a look at what all of this is. Going from the left to the right, it has four 30 amp fuses for 120 amps of current draw. It uses up to a zero gauge wire. For most applications, four gauge will be sufficient, but make sure you check your wire chart for length. It has three RCA inputs, front, 
rear sub or one and two, three and four and five and six. And it has a line output. This line output is programmable through the DSP. So you can feed out whichever one of these you want to this RCA. It has eight channels of high level input. Wait a minute, I know what you're saying. You just said it has six RCA inputs. It's a five channel. Why do we have eight channels of input? Well, most of them are connected together. One and two, three and four, five and six. This top one here that says front high, this is something that all the multi-channel audio control amps have in the LC and the D line is an extra set of high level inputs. The reason for that is like in this Ford Explorer, let's say the tweeters were on a independent channel from the mid base. We can put our tweeters here, we can put our mid base here, and then in the software, we can sum the two channels together. You can do this on the LC version of it. There's a gain control on the top to allow you to adjust those two together. Very similar to what you do on one of the LC 7, 8, or 6Is. It also can be used for anything else that you'd like to feed high level into this amplifier. So if you have something that makes noise or a chime or a beep or anything like that, they would like to mix into any of these channels, you can feed it into this input and blend it in to whatever channel you would like. It uses the ACR3 controller that can be set up as a subwoofer controller for just five and six. You can use it as a master volume for the whole amplifier. It has the standard Phoenix connector outputs that audio control always uses for front, rear, or channel one and two, three and four. The subwoofer output is located here with these eight gauge screw down terminals and it also has an input for the option port if you want to use the Bluetooth streaming and or Bluetooth setup for this amplifier. I personally like to plug it in via USB which is located right here next to my ARC3. Coming back over to the left side on top are power green light, protection red light, and communication blue blinking light. This light only blinks when you're plugged into the USB and it's attached to a computer. GTO sense on and off. For this installation, turn it on. That's our six volt DC offset that we were testing for. Milk source clip along with your maximized input lights. Coming across to the other side of the amplifier, maximized output lights. These are distortion in, these are distortion out for setting the internal gain on the amplifier, which is done in the software. I'm gonna take this over in the car so we can get the measurements for the bracket we need to build to mount this under the seat. Underneath the seat, there's a clip here, and then there's another one back here, which is awesome. My plan is to remove both of these, put nut certs into them, and use these as our screw down point for our amplifier. Most of the time, we'll go to the actual area here. Since it has these two, it seems like it might be easier just to do that. I need to get the measurement from the back here to the front here, which is 18 inches, and then the width between these two seat rails in the back, which is about 12 inches. So I'm gonna start with an 18 by 12 piece of plastic, and then I'm gonna have to remove some of these areas here. There's a hump here I wanna remove for that. Of course, back in the back, I need to also leave room for this wire here to move freely back and forth and then the amplifier to sit just like that. After a couple trips back and forth to the table saw, I've come up with this odd looking shape here. These two areas will be where it screws down into place, and then these are notched out for these two front seat rails. There's also a notch here in the back for that back seat rail. This one isn't even in the area that I need to worry about. And then it'll sit just like this. The amplifier will come in, line up with this front edge, and go right here. I need to get my nut certs into place so I can figure out where I need to drill my holes. Fold the carpet back. This is the hole here. Test fit my nut cert. This is an M5 nut cert. And it fits right into the hole, which is awesome. I don't have to drill it any bigger, which will be nice for the back. Can't get to it as easily as I can this. Now, for those of you that are unfamiliar with nut certs, basically a rivet style device. It has a threaded nut here in the bottom, compression zone here in the middle, and it's designed to go into holes like this. We have a big tool. Well, I'll just show you. This is the tool here. You thread the nut cert onto the end, put it into the hole, pinch these closed, and then it will just twist off. I can now put a screw into here. The reason why I wanna get this screw in here is so I can take this 
and I can use that to scratch my location where I need to drill my hole. I'll repeat the process on the back side here. Mm -hmm. 